everyone, it's Haley. Happy Bookmas Day 26. Today, I'm going to be talking about your most anticipated releases of 2023. So I hope you had a Merry Christmas yesterday, or if you don't celebrate, you just had a good Sunday. I am super excited for today's video because it's one that I thought of last year when I was doing my first like your favorite books of the year video. I was like, how fun would it be to see what books you guys are looking forward to the most? And boy, was it ever like, honestly, it was so interesting looking at this list because the one with the best books of the year usually has like the largest number for each title, if that makes sense. And then for worst books, it's a little bit lower. But for this one, it was like astoundingly higher. Like what I mean by that is like the best book of the year, I think it was like 33 or something like that. People who mentioned that book. And then for the worst book, I think it was 13 or something like that. But for this one, the most anticipated book of the year had 112 people saying that was the most anticipated. I'm not sure why it works out that way. I think maybe because there's only so many books announced and it actually, no, the more I think about it, the more it does make sense. It's a smaller pool because for your favorite book of the year, it doesn't have to be one that came out this year. So that does actually make sense. This is based on 1,088 responses. And if you guys wanted to know about these like little surveys that I'm doing, you can follow me on my Instagram. It's just at Haley and Bookland, but I'm always posting like different things for videos there, different question boxes and everything. And you also can subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that notification bell. So you will be notified whenever I post. I'll post on communities when I do stuff like this, but I also post new videos multiple times a week and also am posting a new video every single day in December. So you don't want to miss any of those, but let's just get into the list. So I'm going to be counting down and I have 16 books to talk about. I'll be counting down from the one that was mentioned the least in terms of this list up to the one that was mentioned the most. And it is a very wide range of 10 to 112. I'm just like baffled by that 112. So your 16th most anticipated book of the year is Spare by Prince Harry. I know this has been super anticipated just in general by like the whole population of the world mostly. So I'm not surprised to see it on this list. If you don't know, this is actually a nonfiction title, which is not something I usually see very often on lists like this, but this one is like unprecedented. It is Prince Harry finally telling his story. Obviously he's been in the news like quite a bit in recent years with Meghan Markle and everything like that. So I think people are even more intrigued by him with him kind of leaving the royal family and everything. I'm not sure if this is one that I will read maybe out of like sheer curiosity. I think I might just kind of wait for what other people are saying first, like hear other people's reviews and then I'll go from there. The 15th most anticipated book of the year with 10 people as well saying that it's their most anticipated. So really 16, 15 and 14, they can all be tied, but I'm not gonna say that every time. I just ordered them where I saw them. But that book is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. I am also really excited for this book. This is the latest book by Talia Hibbert, who is the author of the Brown Sisters trilogy, which is an adult romance trilogy and it's just featuring like a different romance for a different sister in each book and it was so much fun. I absolutely adore her writing, the witty banter but also the steaminess it's amazing. Now this is actually a new YA novel by Talia Hibbert. So she's kind of doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing because a lot of people who used to write YA are moving into the adult sphere or at least like writing a book in the adult sphere, but she usually writes adult and now is moving to YA, which is really interesting. But I am so excited for this one and yeah, I can't wait for it. Number 14 is The Brothers Hawthorne. And I thought that this was the latest book in the, um, inheritance game series. But then when I was filming a video and mentioning the final gambit today, that said that it was the final, like it was the conclusion. So now I'm confused. It is a book in that. So is it a different, like, is it a companion? Yeah, it is a companion. Okay. Maybe I'll read this one. I kind of lost interest with the inheritance game series, but I might be interested in this. Hmm. So it's by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and 10 people as well said that this was their most anticipated book of the year, but it is about four brothers, two missions and one explosive read. So it's kind of like a backstory 
uh, in the world or not necessarily a backstory. It just says she returns to the world, but it seems to me like it's a backstory to the Inheritance games. Interesting. Now that is on my radar. Your 13th most anticipated book of the year is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. This is another one that I personally am actually really looking forward to. This is by the author of Every Summer After and I read that book this year and it was my favorite book of the year. So I definitely am looking forward to more by this author. And this one, I don't know if it's following like same characters or different characters in the same universe or not universe because it's reality but in the same sphere I guess like I don't know if it's a companion or if it's a sequel or if it's just another book that happens to deal with like cabins and cottage country Ontario by the same author I'm not sure yet but we'll find out by the way I will give you like more details on my most anticipated ones and what they're about in my personal most anticipated releases of the year bookmas video which is on Bookmas Day 29, but I just kind of wanted to go over yours today, so I'm not going to be talking about myself as much, although I still do, but whatever. The 12th most anticipated book of the year is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. This is the latest by the author of The House in the Cerulean Sea, which is very popular, and Under the Whispering Door. And 11 people also said that they were really looking forward to this one. I hadn't really heard that there was a new book by TJ Klune, and I haven't read Under the Whispering Door. I, I don't know if people were enjoying that one. I know Cerulean Sea was very, very hyped up, and I read it, and I I did really like it. It was a great read, but Under the Whispering Door is one that I haven't picked up yet. It definitely has been on my radar, but there are honestly so many books that are on my radar. So I think I'll wait and maybe see if I do pick up Under the Whispering Door, how I feel about that one, and see how people are feeling about this one. But I understand why people would be really excited for it. The 11th and 10th most anticipated books of the year actually are both ones that I did not know were happening, but they're both by the same author. So we have The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods by Rick Riordan. So Percy Jackson, I guess, is coming back. That's really exciting. And The Sun and the Star, I forget what it's about because I did kind of look it up and I feel like I should at least tell you a little bit about it. But the Percy Jackson, someone I'm not sure if it's like when he's older or something but it doesn't surprise me that like having a new Percy Jackson book that is obviously going to make its way onto this list and I do think that Rick Riordan is a fantastic writer I just I think I read Percy Jackson like too late in my life to fully appreciate it The Sun and the Star is by Rick Riordan and Mark Oshiro and it's about Nico and Will so we have characters from different series like all of his books kind of intersect and everything and you're seeing all the mythology and all of that but yeah, that's that's fun. Your ninth most anticipated book of the year. Oh, okay. I didn't realize this book wasn't out yet, but that is Finlay Donovan Jumps the Gun. So this is a series, which I didn't realize, and it's the third book in a series, and I don't think I've ever seen this series before, but it's a series by El Cosimano. I have no clue. I, like, have not seen this at all. Oh, I guess I have seen. The first cover looks vaguely familiar, but I don't think I ever realized how popular it was. Also, I think maybe looking back now that Finlay Donovan is Killing It is the one that was suggested to me in that video. I can't remember. The titles are very similar. Wow, how did I... Okay, maybe because it's... Is it a mystery? And I don't usually read mysteries. I don't know how... Actually, the first review that I'm reading says me. I don't read mysteries or crime novels because they're so boring me reading this book. Oh my god, I love this book so much. It's so good. Okay, so maybe I should give this one a go. It has a 4.05 average rating. It has like 87,000 ratings. Interesting. I think I've missed something. But with that being said, I understand why so many of you said you were looking forward to this release. The eighth most anticipated book of the year is One of Us is Back by Karen M. McManus. This is the latest by the author of One of Us is Lying, which came out a couple years ago. And that one was really popular when it came out. A lot of people have loved this series. I thought it was fine, but like I just was talking about. I'm not a huge fan of mystery books, but it doesn't surprise me that like people are looking forward to another book by this author. I'm not sure if this exactly is like a sequel or if it's just in the same world. I'm kind of thinking it's a sequel based on the title. Your seventh most anticipated book of the year is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. Samantha Shannon is the author of The Bone Season and then that like really, really big book that everyone was talking about. And I got a copy actually when and I went to Book Expo slash BookCon that year, but I didn't read it because it's actually a brick. Like it is giant. 
and I hadn't like I'd heard really good things but then I also had heard some people saying it wasn't worth it I don't know maybe it is we'll see maybe I'll listen to the audiobook since I've kind of been like flying through bigger books since I have stopped shaming myself for listening to audiobooks but A Day of Fallen Night is in that same world it is the first book it's like a backstory to it because it says the roots of chaos number zero it's a prequel to the Priory of the Orange Tree that's what it was called it does sound really cool but like a super high fantasy it's one, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get myself to focus for that long when it's like so, I don't know. I like my fantasies to be shorter usually, but that being said, there are some longer ones that I've liked, but 0% surprised to see this one on here because I know like when Priory of the Orange Tree and actually The Bone Season came out, they were both very hyped up. Your sixth most anticipated book of the year is The Stolen Heir by Holly Black. 23 of you said this was your most anticipated book of the year. Holly Black is very much beloved. She is the author of the Cruel Prince. I am kind of surprised to see this one this high on the list because I think her last release I hadn't heard all that much about and if I did hear about it it wasn't really the best things. I think that one was the Book of Night and that was an adult fantasy by her. But maybe The Stolen Heir, I guess The Stolen Heir makes sense because it is a book that is in the world of The Cruel Prince so it's not something like entirely different. People love The Cruel Prince, they love the characters. I thought it was fine, like I liked it definitely didn't like it as much as everyone else, but it does make sense knowing all of that, why this one would be on here. Your fifth most anticipated book of the year is one that I'm super pumped for as well, once again, and that is Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. Heartstopper, you know, like it is just such a sweet and cozy series. It is graphic novels, but it's actually like a webtoon, but then comes out as graphic novels. And this will be the fifth volume, and I've read all of them and love them. There's a Netflix adaptation, I haven't watched it yet, but Heartstopper was one of like your best books of the year. It is a super hyped up series and there's a reason for that. It is so, so cute. Number four is once again, one that is kind of surprising to me because this is an author that had two books actually on the Your Worst Books of the Year video. However, I guess it was also like, there was a book by her on the best books I read this year according to Goodreads video. But anyways, that is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. 28 of you said that this was your most anticipated release of 2023 and I'm hoping that it doesn't let people down. I know the main complaint that I've kind of seen is that she writes kind of the same characters or the same story. I've only read one of her books so I can't really comment on that. I'm not necessarily sure if it's just something where like she's found a formula or a niche that works for her and is continuing to write it. I really don't know but I will probably pick this one up. I mean depending on how I feel about Love on the brain, but this is once again a steminist rom-com as she calls them. And it's always nice to have new novels featuring women in STEM and smart women. And I'm just kind of hoping, cause I know something she really likes to write about is where the woman is like described as so small all the time. And then the guy is described as like so big. So we'll see if this also has that. Maybe it should be the reverse, that would be fun. Now getting to the top three most anticipated releases of the year according to you. Number three is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is where the numbers kind of start to skyrocket. I mean, it's been in the 20s, like nearly 30s, but it starts to get quite high. So 57 of you said that Hellbent was your most anticipated release. And this is actually the sequel to Ninth House. I wanted to call it something else, but Ninth House is what that book is called. I read Ninth House and I enjoyed it. I love Lee Bardugo. She's one of my favorite writers of all time. Uh, Ninth House just wasn't my favorite. It is very different than what she usually writes. So I think it was just kind of a taste thing. However, I did think it was good. Ninth House is like the Alex Stern series, so this is the second book and it's definitely highly anticipated. Not surprised to see this on here at all because people love Lee Bardugo and for good reason. She is fantastic. But the Ninth House series I know was very hyped up and then people kind of had mixed feelings on it because it is like very jarring. However, a lot of people really enjoyed it, so I'm I'm just happy that, you know, she's still killing the game. Your second most anticipated release of the year is Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is the 
next book. I don't even, I can't keep track of how many there are. I have kind of stopped keeping track. I used to know when I was working at the bookstore because obviously like I would see all of them, but now I have no idea, but it's the Chain of Iron series, the latest by Cassandra Clare. Cassandra Clare is the author of the Shadowhunter universe, all of those books. And I feel like I haven't heard as much about her books as you used to. I don't think they've really picked up on the TikTok craze or maybe I've kind of been missing it, but she used to be very, very popular and obviously still is. It's just like not as much as before. But 88 of you said that this was your most anticipated release of the year, which doesn't surprise me because I mean, there are obviously still a lot of people out there who love her. It's just, I don't think she's really gotten that like TikTok where it's absolutely inescapable level. But she used to be like on YouTube. So she kind of still is. It's just, there's so much like hype for some other books that it's hard to sift through all of that. And finally, your most anticipated release of 2023 with 112 people saying they were looking forward to this book is The Happy Place by Emily Henry. Not surprised, but also thrilled to see this book on here. I also am a lover of Emily Henry. I just think that anything she writes at this point, I'm going to love and I'm definitely going to read it. I have yet to be disappointed, knock on wood, because like I don't want to be let down by anything that she writes. I actually haven't looked at what this one is about. I'm not sure, like usually her characters have kind of a literary connection and I haven't seen if this one has that because I was curious I, what she would do next for a literary connection. Connection. It honestly was just one that I automatically like added to my TBR and pre-ordered because I knew it was something that I was going to want immediately. So I don't think that this one has a literary element to it, which is fine, but it's about a couple who broke up months ago and they make a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week-long vacation with their best friends. Ooh, interesting. Okay, I already love this. They broke up six months ago, but they don't tell their friends, right? So then they find themselves sharing the largest bedroom at this cottage that they get away to with their best friends. Oh my God, this sounds so good. Also, I love like a good cottage beachy read. Oh, I cannot wait for that one. And obviously neither can you guys. Okay, so those are all of your most anticipated releases of 2023. This is the last video that I'm doing with that Google form, but thank you guys so much for filling it out. It is so helpful and I love doing these videos. I love hearing what you guys are excited about, what you guys are reading because it's way more interesting to hear like other people's opinions every now and again even though it is my channel. I don't want to just like talk about my opinions because I mean it's just my taste right? So having other people who like other things is really nice. Like the Cassandra Clare I'm not all that excited for because I've stopped reading the series a long time ago actually but I know a lot of you guys are so it's fun to just kind of talk about those things. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Tomorrow is Bookmas Day 27 and I will be talking about my TBR pile. All the books that I own that I haven't read yet and it is massive but I'm going to be like rather than what I've done in years past where I just like read the list, I'm actually going to be ordering it by genre. So you'll get to know a little bit more about what the books are about apart from just the title and the author. So I will see you in that new video tomorrow. Bye! Bye.